the whole marketing system has been built on this growth economy where we have to have people consuming more and more and more and more and we change people's expectations to buy more and more and more and then wonder you know why people aren't happy even though they have the latest whatever you know when I was young um, like most people you know we didn't have as much stuff as we have now when you got something like a winter coat or a pair of shoes or something in my family that meant they were very well made and I was also expected to really take care of them and I didn't expect to get a half a dozen more <laughs> until I grew out of them I see people looking at the prices of what we bring back and I see them kind of startle you know because well it's only a scarf right I mean it's much more than only a scarf I mean it took a woman three months to make this and it took her decades to become skilled enough to be able to make it and it's made from the finest quality silk and you know, sustainable dyes, and it's all done on a very small scale, very human you know, craftsmanship, artistry, you know, kind of, there's somebody's energy imbued in that, you know, that scarf. So, you know, comparatively speaking, I think it's really cheap. I mean, you go and you look at how much a pair of jeans that were made in some sweatshop or some athletic shoes or something that were made in a sweatshop, way more. But somehow or another, well, that's to be expected or something. So I have a lot of trouble with how people assign value. Being able to connect up with these weaving groups was fabulous because it actually allowed me to get past that this is just a market transaction. It allowed us to actually meet and chat and visit with the weavers. And because we were buying a significant amount of um, goods from them, not only are they gracious because they're in their, social, in their society, they're prone to be gracious or trained to be gracious, but it actually was worthwhile for them as well because we were going to be buying a lot of merchandise. You know, when we, we talked to them about, well, how long does it take you to do this? And they kind of, like, their eyes got all shifty, like, well, I don't know. Because <laughs> time just, wasn't really that pressing for them. You know, they could talk about seasons. You know, well, this is the season when we farm rice, and this is the season when we weave, and this is the season when we prepare the fields for next year's crops and stuff. But those are big chunks of time, you know. And, and uh, I really like that. I really like that a lot. I found it very difficult when I came back to Canada I found it difficult to live with a phone. I'm of a generation where we were advised to, you know, be here now and, and things. And then we surround ourselves with a million things that make it really hard to be here now, you know, because we've got our cell phones and our Blackberries and our internets and our DVDs and our... Uh, it's very hard to just be present where you are. And I think one of the things I really like about being in the Global South is that people are usually very much here now. <laughs>